I love this lady. In fact, you know what? I actually met her when we shared the stage. Some of you already know her. We shared the stage at an event called Embrace Your Ambition. And she's like this spitfire, but she's humble at the same time. You know, she's like so supportive and so loving. She is an entrepreneur. She owns three Orange Theory Fitness. Have y'all heard of Orange Theory? Yeah, owns three of them. She's an incredible speaker. Y'all put your hands up and welcome to the stage, Miss Annie Let's do this. Are you up on night? Awesome, thank you. I was walking down the hall in the seventh grade, and I still remember the day. I had saved up all of my money for this brand new dress, and it had a little pink skirt with a ruffle, pink top, white polka dots, sleeves to about here, and I went to my first class, I came back to my locker, and two older girls came by. And they started to point and laugh, and I started to feel very self-conscious. I went to my next class, came back to my locker, and so did the girls. But this time, they brought an older girl with them, and all three were pointing and laughing. And I went from feeling amazing that day to feeling about two inches big and just wanting to crawl inside of that locker. I didn't think about that day for a lot of years. And if I did, I just felt really bad about it. But looking back years later, I can see that it was really then that I started to create some beliefs that I carried with me for a long time. It was the belief of not being pretty enough, don't stand out, play it small. We all tell ourselves stories. We tell ourselves stories about ourselves, our lives, the people in them, the things that happen to us. And our lives are largely formed by the stories that we do tell ourselves. Maybe you can relate to my story. It was a story of not good enough. Sometimes that story looked like you're not smart enough. I always felt like there were people in the room that were smarter than I was. Sometimes it was not pretty enough. When I would look in the mirror and think, why does my hair look like that? Or why do I have that pimple? And sometimes it was the story of not skinny enough. I would put on jeans and think, why don't my legs look better? But when my mind couldn't think of anything else, what it filled in was the word good. You're not good enough. I didn't think about it for a long time. How much was enough or how good was good enough? Other people were brilliant, beautiful, good enough, but Annie Randall, you're not one of them. And then I started to pay attention what was that voice in my head saying day in and day out? And I will tell you, when I listened, man, that voice was mean, really mean. I would have no friends, no employees if I spoke to other people the way I spoke to myself. And honestly, I would never dream of saying those things. But then I started to think about, look around and think, what is the voice everyone else is using? Is it the same? And I realized it really was. A lot of people had this really mean inner critic. And in fact, studies show eight out of 10 millennials today don't feel like they're good enough in any area of life. And our life is largely formed by these stories that we tell ourselves. So how do we tell ourselves better stories? One of my favorite books is by Robert Miller. It's called A Million Miles in a Thousand Years. 
And I love it because in that book, Robert talks about how he decides. He's the main character of his story. And he went from this life of laying on his couch most of the time, wasting a lot of his money, to riding his bike across America, starting a nonprofit that he was really passionate about, and he has a successful company still today. And it just made me realize that if Robert could be in control of his life and his story, I could be in control of mine, and you can be in control of yours too. But before we can move forward and tell ourselves or go out and live this amazing life, we really have to take a step back and see what is that story I'm telling myself on a daily basis? Because right now, 50% of Americans can't or won't look at themselves in the mirror. A lot of that has to do with the story they're telling themselves. So when a story comes up for me, I ask three questions. Where did the story come from? Is the story true? And do I want to keep believing the story? Let's look at the first one. Where did the story come from? We give a lot of time in our lives to people that absolutely don't deserve it. Those past boyfriend and girlfriends, maybe that terrible boss that you had. But it's trickier when it's somebody that's close to you. Maybe you had a parent or a teacher tell you you're not going to amount to anything. And what we know is hurt people hurt people. So really taking a step back to look at where was that person at at the time and did they have the ability to speak goodness into your life? The second part, is it true? For so long, I thought everything I believed was true. I now know that's not the case. My brain tells me stuff all day long that's absolutely not true. Whenever I, I own three Orange Theories, and whenever I have a new employee start, I have them read the book Crucial Conversations. And I love the book because it talks about how to handle conflict, but it really talks about you tell yourself a story in a split second, and the issue is sometimes that story's not true. I had, I had this happen to me a couple weeks ago. Whenever I send an email to a large amount of people, I always have someone proofread it. And so I called my general manager, said, hey, I'm going to send this out. Will you proofread it? She said, sure, send it over. And usually Maddie's really quick about responding back. And I didn't hear from Maddie for a couple hours. And the story my brain started to say was, Annie, I bet there's a lot of grammar issues in there. I don't think Maddie likes the content. And now you put her in a hard position because you're her boss and you're, she's going to have to give you hard feedback. What really happened, guys, is Maddie called back and said, hey, I got busy with a member and an employee. I just read it. I made a couple small changes, changed the color. We're good to go. I know this that my brain tells me stories, and yet it was so easy to fall into. So whenever I have to deal with a conflict, a lot of times that'll be the question I'll ask. What's the story I'm telling myself right now? And sometimes I'll start the conversation that way and say, hey, the story I'm telling myself right now is this, and give that person time to respond, because sometimes I have it right on, and other times I'm really off. The last one here, do I want to keep believing the story? I'm not the same person I was at 14, 26, 37, and you're not either. Just like you wouldn't think about getting out your flip phone and pushing the number one three times for the letter C. <laughs> we can't take those same stories with us. We have to let those go. So let me tell you a little bit about how did I do this with my good enough story. And this is still a journey for me. I haven't got there yet. But when a story comes up and I say, where does the story come from for the good enough? It came from comparison. I was looking at what everyone else was doing. How pretty is she? 
How skinny are they? How smart is he? Instead of running the race I was meant to run, I was looking what everybody else was doing. Is it true? For so many years, I would have told you, yes, absolutely, it is true. I fully believed it. But what I can tell you now is I was looking through the lens of perfection. Because if it wasn't 100%, it wasn't good enough. If it wasn't the Harvard MBA or the airbrush model, it wasn't good enough. I've been able to change that. And when I look at somebody and think, man, she's beautiful, I'll ask, what are your beauty secrets? When I think about what are areas I need to really focus on and be smart in, there's a few that I love, like leadership, health. But I hate accounting and financial statements. But I have a really great accountant, and I don't worry about that anymore. My next one, do you want to keep believing? Maybe I need, oh, I thought I needed Henry's special noise, but I don't. <laughs> Do I want to keep believing the story? And the answer here was no. It wasn't making me be the person that God created me to be. And when I looked at who is that person, I anchored it in his truth. That person said, is a child of God, created in his image, and he has a plan for my life. And you know what? That person is good enough. Not because of who I am, but because of whose I am. So I was able to change my story. And you're able to change your story too. Our brain has something called neuroplasticity. And all that means is the ability to change. I grew up in South Dakota. And when it snows in November, a lot of times it doesn't melt until March. And it creates these ruts in the road. And the longer the winter goes, the more the ruts get deeper and deeper. And it's similar with our brain. The longer you believe the story, the deeper and more ingrained it is in your brain. But you can change it. We all have the ability to change our story. In 2021, I'm looked back from the year, and I am a goal girl. I love setting goals, checking them off. And at the end of the year, I had checked off almost everything on my goal list. But I just had this nagging feeling that I was meant for more. So in 2022, my motto was, what if you said yes? And I said yes to a lot of things that scared me. But I didn't do it alone. I had an amazing coach, Amber Lee, right by my side. And I had an incredible group of ladies in this mastermind supporting me to do so. I needed to be brave, but I didn't have to do it by myself. So you get to write your story too. What is the story that you want to write in 2023 and beyond? Because be intentional. You don't get a redo. You can't go back and rewrite your story, but we all get to write our stories going forward. And I love this quote by Roland Bird. It says, moving through life is like driving a car. Sometimes you have to look in the rearview mirror and deal with what you see. But you can't move forward if you stare in the rearview mirror. So we all have to take a minute and look back. What is the story you're telling yourself? Is that the story you want to tell yourself? If not, let's change it and move on to live the life you want to live and you deserve to live. And I just have a feeling in here today that somebody needs to hear it. You are enough. You don't have to keep striving and pushing you're enough right now. You just need to step into it, be that person that you were created to be, and it's on the other side of the story you tell yourself about you. Because if you don't, the world misses out. You have gifts and talents that only you can bring, and the world needs those. You are enough 
right now. I have a passion for helping people look confident and proud of themselves when they look in the mirror. You can connect with me. I have a free Zoom Healthy Living series, and it's designated just for that. I have several doctors coming on to talk about things like fasting, blood work, things that really help you look in the mirror to be the person that you want to be. So thank you very much. I'm so grateful to be here. This is that ice cold Michelle fight for that white gold. This one for them good girls, them good girls, straight masterpieces. Styling, wildin', living it up in the city. Got Chuck's on with Saint Laurent. Gotta kiss myself, wow. so pretty.